morning. How, are, how is everyone today? Pretty good? That's the way. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to Nibbalop National Park and to Jarwin Country. My name's Sam. I'm going to be looking after you for the next couple of hours. Seated for me today is when we're pulling in and out of the mooring points and going through one shallow section. Now that we're out on open water, feel free to stand up and move around the boat. a lot shorter as you go further up into the system. So seeing the first two gorges as we are on today's cruise, we're going to be covering roughly one third of the entire system. Australia, he reported favourably on the pastoral potential of the Northern Territory to the South Australian government's ownership. Jarwin people don't actually believe that they own the land itself. What they believe is that they belong to the land and that they're responsible for taking care of it. In saying that, absolutely everything that you see while you're out here in the park today is 100% Jarwin owned. There's two different species to be found in Australia. We've got the saltwater or the estuarine crocodile, which Jarwin people call ginger. That's what that trap's for. And we've also got the freshwater or the Johnston River crocodile, which is known as goimar in the Jarwin language. Occasionally though, we get a sudden drop in the river level and they get trapped in by those natural rock bars. So at the beginning of every dry season, the park rangers conduct four week intensive saltwater crocodile clearance surveys. And 32 to 34 degrees, they're all gonna come out male and they're only gonna have around 64 days to incubate those guys. So roughly half the time of the females. Now, if you go in the peak of an average wet season, we can drive our boats directly over the top of this rock. So you are looking at a nine or so metre river rise above its current level. Our regular three gorge cruise in the dry season takes around four hours to complete. In the wet season in that power boat, it only takes you 40 minutes to get to the top of the third gorge and five minutes to get all the way back home again. So it is a need to, and also fill up those water bottles before we make our way through to the second gorge evidence that the people of this area have been making art for at least 65,000 years. Now this particular, well there's a few different methods that archaeologists used wow. subject of the artwork to get a date range. So a good example of that is the contact period which is 300 years ago to the present and if you've got paintings of buffalo, stockmen, cattle, anything like that, it's estuarine period, which means that it's between 8,000 and 20,000 years as to how and why they have lasted so long. Probably the greatest reason is in the material that's been used to paint them. We've got enough room in it for one boat to come in at a time and we have got another tour coming up directly behind us. So once I let you guys offload from this boat, I'll pull the boat back out. Stairs, you'll find yourself at a fence line at the base of the cliff. High up on that cliff face behind the fence line is that Jarwin rock art site. Make sure you take plenty of photos of the paintings up there as you move past them. And if you've got any questions about them, just bring them with you through to that boat in the second gorge and I'll answer them for you there in the back of your minds for me. That'd be greatly appreciated. We usually take about 10 to 15 minutes to walk through here. It is the narrowest and shallowest part of, of the river here, yeah, so I think it's a sure to stay seated for me. Now, if anyone's been wondering what we do with our boats here in the wet season, 
at the end of every dry season, we tie them all to us. That's what we did last year, and I hope to never do that again. Thank you. 